I received a email off Steve asking a few questions about France. So please pause the video now and read the email if you want to read it. And I'll just answer the questions. So the first question relates to should should it buy or rent? My personal view at the moment in Spain, as you see, we rent initially. Uh, the Philippines we own. If we were moving somewhere else, we would rent first. I wouldn't buy in a country or area I have no familiarity over. Um, it's a bit like this town could be great, but it's the next town along. Uh, but when you visited, the, uh, the neighboring town seemed okay. You moved there and then wish you'd gone down the street. So I would say rent initially, and then if you fall in love with the place, then make that decision whether you want to buy. But also I believe France has a very high rental um, population and the uh, tenants have a lot of rights. It's the same Spain. Tenants in Spain have a lot more rights than they do in the UK. So that, that would be my advice is to rent first then make that decision later. Uh, next question. Have I ever lived in France? I've been to France several times. I haven't actually lived there. I've lived in Germany for six years. And we spent a bit of time in France on our route to Spain. And I would actually say some of the negativity that people say, oh, the French don't like us, etc. I would say it's more to do with a lot of people do not immerse themselves in the local community. Uh, for example, here in Spain... The guy at the petrol station the other day, he's getting me to speak Spanish to him because I'm, you know, I'm saying look, my Spanish is, you know, poco is, is not, you know, small Spanish. Um, so he's actually giving me the amounts and stuff in Spanish to encourage me to speak Spanish. That is the majority of the problems that Brits face in Spain, uh, or well, Spain or France, is they don't integrate. Um, they want people to speak English, and they, I mean, I've seen it in Singapore as well. I find these people obnoxious and irritating. It's not the locals; it's often nothing to do with the locals. Also, when you get that arrogance thing that people complain about, a lot of the time it's not arrogance; it's just the way people are. It's, it's just their mannerisms. It's not something to get offended by. It's just the way people are in that area. Also, if you're looking at bigger cities, you will find that the more provincial you go, the more relaxed people are. Like in the UK, US, whatever, you go to a major city, people can be quite aggressive because cities do that to people. But when you go out into the suburbs or into the uh, little villages and stuff, it's a completely different mentality. So I wouldn't take the information that negative expats or negative people make on others because um, sometimes it's a justification why they left France and went back to the UK um, they won't mention the fact that they didn't think it through didn't plan well enough didn't have enough money etc it's all the French fault for not liking them it's that sort of stupidity sometimes so I would say put that to one side myself I never judge anybody until I've actually spoken to them met them and understood them um, because so many people put personal opinions above the actual facts because they don't want to say, well, we made a mistake, let's blame the French. You know, it's that, it is that trivial, I'll be honest with you. Would I consider France? The, the answer is yes. When we were actually there, we were like, well, if we hadn't set things up in Spain, we'd have probably stayed in France um, because we loved the food there. We found everything friendly, everything was convenient. And... We had a great time there. So the answer is yes, I would have considered it. And I've mentioned on previous videos that we may move further north at some point, France, Germany, etc., to give April and the kids a bit more of Europe, you know, experience more of Europe. So yes, it's, we do consider it ourselves as an option later on, even if it's just like for a few months or something, it's just like um, as an experience. You know, I'm for enjoying life. I'm not a nine to five guy. I'm a person who wants to make the money, travel, enjoy it, rather than sitting there waiting for a pension. I want to get out and enjoy it while I'm... Did, you, did we choose Spain because 
it suited my wife more. Um, I would say it's a bit of a mishmash because the first thing is if you're an ex-Spanish colony, you can get citizenship within two years. So it's much easier than going to the UK and playing the five years and rip off Britain costing me about £18,000 to process all the visas. Uh, that's the first thing. The next thing is because Sabuano is pretty close to Spanish, my wife picked up Spanish very, very quickly, um, which has obviously got some huge potential benefits there as well. Climate-wise, we didn't really take climate into it, to be honest. It, it wasn't really something we had thought about because we were looking at Germany at first. Um, the reason being is I've been to Germany. I've spent six years in there. I I know Germany quite well, you know, well, the bits I've been to. So I understand Germany quite quite a bit, plus I speak a fair bit of German. Um, beyond that, the reason we come to La Mata and Alicante is I've got family already here. My cousin's here, though he's currently in Glasgow. Um, but also a friend of mine, Steve's here that I've known for years. So we've got business things that we're involved in. So there's multiple reasons for from a business potential. Um, one of the key elements work-wise is I'm only about 30 minutes from Alicante Airport. So the commute between Spain and the UK is an important key element. Because of the package holidays, I can get cheap flights. Um, looking at other locations, it's a bit more hit and miss. This is why we sort of come here. Although we're not from the Benidorm crowd, which are predominantly the uh, budget, all-inclusive holiday types. We're, well, I don't even know where our nearest British neighbour is. You know, I couldn't actually say because we don't see any Brits in, in La Mata. Um, I think most are at the other end of the town, if at all. Um, May and Gordon are probably our nearest one, which is about 15 minutes drive away. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, from a cultural and integration point of view, we live in a predominantly Spanish town with nearly everybody just speaking Spanish. Very few speak English. I've already discussed French people, but talking about Spaniards, Sp Spanish people are generally extremely friendly. Um, I do find some of the old people can be a bit sour-faced, but that's old people. doesn't matter where they're from. <laughs> uh, but there's probably more sour Brits than there is sour, sour Spanish here. Um, but the point being is you will find the average Spaniard under 60 um, is very friendly, very bubbly, quite loud. They're famous for being loud. There's actually a charity organisation to do with the deaf that's involved in trying to get people to be quieter in restaurants at the moment in Spain. Uh, Spain is only second to Japan for being loud people. Um, but you will also find that they're very hands-on, you know, they like hugging, they like kissing, all that sort of stuff, you know, beso beso, where they kiss the cheeks, but also kids, they'll hug and kiss and all this. For me, from a military background, it's, a, it's quite a bit too hands-on for me, but it's this is the local culture, so I've got to accept it, it's not for me to change, and there's nothing wrong with it. And also, I find that the only downside I find in Spain is bureaucracy with paperwork. There seems to be a paper for everything. Um, but even with that, you will find people will want to help. Where you'll have a barrier is when you do not make an effort to speak Spanish. One of the first phrases I recommend learning is apologizing for not speaking Spanish. So you go, I apologize, I only speak a little Spanish. And they appreciate that because then they might go, I speak a little English because then they know your Spanish skills is worse than uh, their English skills and they'll meet you halfway. If you make no effort, they will often go, go and find a translator because they don't like speaking English a lot of time because they're a bit shy of their language skills. But also in the UK, for example, people complain that people do not speak English but they'll come to Spain and expect the Spanish to speak English. Completely bizarre. And my personal viewpoint is, it's my fault for not speaking Spanish. It's as simple as that. 
Um, so make more of an effort with your Spanish. The first bit to learn is all your apologies. <laughs> right. So how do we cope with the climates in Cebu, Valencia? Um, first thing is Cebu, I find, can be quite hot, which is why I will reverse my day. I'll work at night when it's cooler, but also it's much quieter because there's no motorbikes and stuff going past. Um, Temperature-wise, it can be a bit sticky. Uh, I mean, what I find in the, the Philippines, if it's rainy season, you suddenly get that sudden downpour. I whack the aircon on to rip the moisture out because otherwise you get this damp, uh, air which isn't very healthy either um, but it's not really an issue in Cebu I'm used to it I've been there that long and this is why I say you know get used to living without aircon uh, if you can um, but also in Spain first thing it, the weather's sunny most of the time if, we, if the sun comes out here it's hot um, it's, it's November we've had a day Last week there was 27 degrees. The last couple of days have been about 17. But at the same time, as soon as that sun comes up and you stand in it, you're hot anyway. So, you know, it's hard to put on a coat. And the only reason I've got a coat this week is my wife was complaining that I'm the only person wearing a T-shirt at this school. <laughs> because for me, I'm used to working outdoors and stuff. Um, I worked in construction for years. And generally, once you start working you don't bother with the uh, your coats and that just because it's too hot when it once you start building a bit of heat up with doing some work um but yeah valencia not too much of a problem the the biggest issue you probably got is most of the properties here have air conditioning you know the, the apartments and stuff but they don't have heating so although you've got hot on the aircon it's not exactly the best option but you will find in the houses they'll do have a lot of them do have wood wood burners and stuff for heating in the homes. But yeah, the climate here is not really an issue. Um, April doesn't have a problem with it. Um, I mean, through the summer and stuff, it does get hot here, and it's a different heat from the Philippines. But myself, I've lived from one extreme to the other. I've done winters in Germany, for example, but I've also spent some of my childhood in Hong Kong. So from my childhood, I've lived all over the world. So the climates don't I adapt to whatever it is. It doesn't matter if it's minus 17 or, you know, plus 60 degrees, which in the desert it was. I was when I was in Oman, Dubai, Qatar, etc. It gets up to about 60 degrees sometimes. So climates don't really bother me. I just adapt to it. It's just natural i suppose because of the moving around so much as a child and then into my uh, teens etc you don't really notice it because it's always been like it you've always adapted to your surroundings uh, so yeah climate's no issue whatsoever if anything it's much better than the uk in spain because you find that the sun's out every day it's not gloomy overcast rainy which is quite regular in the uk here it may be windy it may be cold, but it's still bright with the sun, uh, which may sound a bit strange, but from, um, I think they call it a vitamin D point, you know, where you get your, it sort of like boosts you up from the vitamin D from the sun. It's a healthier environment. Even if it's not that different, it just seems different. It's, it's sort of like when you step off the plane, you go into holiday mode because it's bright, sunny, etc. You feel happier. It, it just... It's just a natural well-being thing uh, where I find in the UK it's become so overcast, you know, overcast and glum. And I know some people may attack me over saying such a thing. But when I speak to people that have been out here a long term and people that have also transferred or go back and work, they all say this exact same thing. They feel happier in Spain. And it's mainly because of the sunlight. OK, they do have a better way of living. Um, they understand that we work to live not live to work where the uk is riddled with debt phenomenally and driving like a slave master to get as much money out of people as possible on this little little wheel that spins around um to keep the economy flowing and 
escalating debt. It's on a collision course of debt at some point where the whole lot will crash. It can continue the way it does. I mean, it has done for since the 80s, but I can't see it being sustainable, especially if there's a shift to moving to the gold standard or anything else that can affect the money movements, but also if the EU sort of went down the toilet with the financial sides. Because, I mean, I know Greece and Spain, etc., have got financial issues, but they're recovering. The UK doesn't really have an economy as such. It doesn't... It's got rid of everything. You know, it's sold everything off. It's nuclear power plants are, are, are French. It's railways are open to the highest bidders. The... Um, What else? Oh, they're closing the steel down to to please the Chinese, etc. The UK's been sold off. They're, that's why I have a problem with my identity as being British, because it is not the way I, I personally would run a country I'm associated with. And this also goes against it when I can see so much corruption on that side. Because all these deals seem to benefit certain people that are associated with politicians, etc., that also push the same information through. A bit like old uh, Cameroon's father in the windmills, the, the wind turbines, all conveniently um, sorting out things out for themselves, while me, you, and every other taxpayer is robbed blind. All right, um, I hope that's answered all your questions. I know I went on a bit of a political rant at the end there, but it's my frustrations with the UK. It's why... I feel more of a European or world citizen than I do British because the Britishness is being sucked out of me um, by so much negativity, be it the anti-immigration, um, even for British citizens, because much I'm sure it's much harder for me to go to the UK with my family than it would be, say, Syrian refugees. Um, now, that's not a stab at the Syrian refugees because at the end of the day, I agree with the whole asylum-seeking um, process but the way it gets abused I don't agree with uh, because at the end of the day a lot of this stuff has come about to create a positive change where things like um, when the Jews were persecuted in World War 2 we didn't do enough so this is the thing although people are going oh we don't want this they need to sit there and look and go hang on a minute, there's a reason this existed in the first place. What we need to do is adjust how it's done and analyse what's causing it, what fixes the problems, and are we part of the problem or part of the solution? All right, thanks for watching.